Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Ask Me Monday. I am Vicki Howell. If you are watching live with me at noon central time, then welcome. And it's so good. So please join in on the conversation. Share it live so people can dive on in live as well. And please be sure to let me know what you're knitting, what you're crocheting, what you're sewing, what you're making. If you're not joining me live and you really are only here for the tutorial, please look in the show notes on Facebook or on YouTube. If you look in the description, I will tell you when the um, demonstration will start. This episode of Ask Me Monday is brought to you by Knitter's Pride and Knit Pro. Um, they've been a very supportive needle and tool and hook company. Um, if you don't know about them, you should definitely check them out. They've got great products. They also do a ton of wonderful work um, for women in India, and they're just all around an awesome company. So we thank them for bringing this episode. So please, as usual, say hello to each other. Let us know where you're watching from. The comment section is your community, my community, and I love inspiration. I love knowing what you're working on. You know, if you're into hand lettering, I want to see that. If you're into photography, show me one of your snaps. Any of those things, if you'll post a link or an actual photo in the comments section, you might have to do it after we're not live. Sometimes it gets a little fussy. Please do so, because if you don't, what I end up doing is I end up tracking down all of the projects. <laughs> you know, like if you mention somebody's, I go to Ravelry and I find the pattern and put there and it would just, it saves me a ton of time. If you'll just post it because we're nosy and we want to know. Um... So yeah, so hello, hello. So what did you all make over the weekend or work on over the weekend? Um, I did some knitting. I started the mittens for the Knit Show book, which is going to come out on uh, fall 19. Um, but I actually spent all of Saturday sewing. So I made this skirt. You can't really see it because it's so far away. I was pretty excited because I'd never done inset pockets before. Um, I also did shearing, um, which was really cool. I'd never done that before. Um, and so that was fun. Unfortunately, I made totally the wrong size. Uh, so I'm going to be giving this to any friend who's interested in doing it. It's really flowy and fun. Um, I found this fabric actually just at Joann's, um, but it's kind of got a rayon in it, so it's really flowy. The pattern is called Cleo. It is from um, Ray Hookstra. She goes by Made by Ray. You probably, if you sew at all, you probably know her stuff. Or if you listen to the Craftish podcast, I interviewed her last year. Lovely person, great designs. I took her creative bug class over the weekend um, just because it's super helpful. It helps me as a teacher see how other people are teaching. And plus, I just really like the whole immersion process. So that's what I did. All right. So hello, Valerie. Hello, Alexis. We've got a lot of our regulars here today. I enjoy that. Today, what we are going to be working on is knitting with beads. So years ago, I was invited to the um, Emma Carter Museum of American Art in Fort Worth in Texas. And they had this great, I don't know if they have it anymore, but they had this great program called Crafting from the Collection. And what it all it was is they brought in just different well-known crafters who, and they asked us to look around, look at their artwork, and see what inspired us, and then create a few craft pieces, handicraft pieces that were inspired by that. So, you know, I picked several pieces. I did one quilted, you know, pillow based off this um, cubism piece that I saw. Um, I did an embroidered and fabric piece, or maybe it was photo emulsion. I don't remember. It's been so many years. But the one that the one that's relevant today is a really lightweight lacy scarf. And for the life of me, I can't find what I did with it. It probably ended up being a teacher's gift, to be honest with you. But um, the piece that is relevant today was, um, oh, Maja from Slovenia. So nice to see you. It's nice to see you too, Peggy. Um, is a lightweight scarf, and it was based off of a painting called Dew on Spider's Vertical Web. And it was by um, a man named Wilson uh, Allen... Wilson Allen Bentley. Sorry, it's been so long. Um, and it was just this really cool, like, black, and um, I think it had... It had some like resin drops on it to make it look like dew. And so I made this scarf and I'm just going to hold up my iPad because I can't find the scarf anywhere. Whoops. There's a detailed pi picture. 
and you can kind of see and it's a really light it's more of a scarflet or a an ascot ascots are really big 10 years ago but you can you can also make this longer and have it be a proper scarf and it's very lightweight i used lace um i think though that yarn was malabrigo lace i'm using a different cashmere lace today um and the this really great peaks and waves pattern with it to give it a light airiness. That light airiness not only makes it, you know, flowy for the summer, but also it balances out the weight of the beads so that your piece doesn't weigh down so it still has a really lovely drape. So I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you the stitch pattern for that scarf if you're interested, but what I'm really going to focus on today is how to put the beads on. So even if you're not into this pattern at all, you can still apply this technique to any beading project that you are knitting. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of different ways, but the first way is the one that I chose to use for this scarf. So as always, I will turn the camera around and you can continue sharing with each other. Before I do that though, um, let's talk about getting needles or let's talk about beads first. So when you're shopping for beads, you want to make sure that you get beads that have that are big enough to go around whatever yarn that you're using. So, you know, for example, if you're using a chunky weight yarn, there's no way that these beads would work. You would shred your yarn. It just wouldn't work. So that's something to keep um, to keep in mind. But you also don't want ginormous, you know, holes so that they're or maybe you do, but it'll just really weigh it down so that the they don't fit snugly on the yarn. So that's one thing to know. Now, the other the challenge can often be getting the actual bead onto the yarn because the hole might be small, um, might be too small for a regular tapestry needle, but your yarn might be too big for a sewing needle. So that is what we are going to address today. The method that I am using and recommend is that you pre-string all of your beads onto your yarn first. Now, if you run out, no big deal. Just like if you ran out of a yarn or uh, um, yarn on a yarn ball, you can just stop the next new row, fill it up again, start again. So no big deal. Um, but I, it's so much easier. It's easier for the flow. And I will show you what happens if you can't do it that way, but I really recommend pre-stringing. Okay, so this is where I am going to flip around and show you how to easily string beads on yarn. I am using just some just some lace weight yarn today. You can use whatever weight you want um, for swatching. You could for the scarf too, it just won't be as light and airy if you don't go with a lace weight. Okay, I'm gonna flip around and you continue sharing. Okay. So, the first thing that you could do is you can just take your yarn and you would take any embroidery needle that you had that would accommodate your yarn and you would just thread it and string them on, right? That that would be easy peasy. More often than not though, um, the, the needles don't accommodate the yarn and the beads, like they're just not friends. So there's a few things that you can do. Hi Mary, nice to see you. Um, okay, so you can often use just like jewelry wire and you could fold it over and make a little needle um, and then poke it through. But honestly, that often doesn't work with these really small beads too. So a little hack is using regular sewing thread and a needle and just putting a small loop of thread and then you just knot it into that needle. Then what you do is you take the yarn and you just thread that yarn through that loop of thread. I'm saying thread too many. How about you feed it? That's better. Feed that through the thread and just let it hang. Okay, from here you're going to you're going to place on a bead. So you just take your bead and you pull it on and you want to make sure that you hold on to the whole thing and just slide it right on. Easy peasy, right? I'm going to change the angle of this. I don't like the view that you're getting. Okay, 
Then when you get your groove on, well, the most awesome way to find beads is when they're pre-strung, like these are. And then what you can do is you can just take your needle and you can kind of load it with a few beads at a time. See, I've got maybe, what, five, six beads on there? Then you pull out the string. Okay, and then you just push them all on. Now, this isn't working because one of these beads, this one right here, of course, sometimes, and I'm working with check glass beads, sometimes the holes are not uniform and so you'll get a dud every once in a while. So let's try again and see if we have better luck. So you're just going to slide on a few. Thanks, Joanne, for the the props of my birdie dish. It was actually, a, it was one of those painting places where you go and paint pottery. And I did that. Okay, so there we go. Okay, there we go. So then they all slid on at once. So that's the super easy way. And then, oops, my yarn flew out, which will happen if you're not holding on to it. So it's really easy, you just feed it back through. Now, if you don't have beads that are on a string and they're just loose, move these over here, you can put them on a piece of felt or a jewelry board or just a jar, or excuse me, like a dish like this. And you can still just grab several at a time, or at least a few at a time. Load up your needle and then pull, put them on. And that is how you load your beads onto the yarn. All right, so let's talk knitting with them. So whenever you're working in garter stitch or stockinette stitch or slip stitch, you want to actually knit on your beads on the wrong side. These are clear, it's hard to see. You can see if I push, put them really close. In hindsight, I should have used colored beads, but it is what it is. Okay, so this is the lace pattern I'm going to be showing you in a second that is used in the scarf. And that pattern is on my website. Um, and I will post a link in the show notes as uh, it will be a post that will also have this video. And please share this video if you know anybody that's interested in knitting with beads. I would love it if you would share it. Okay, so I am all set up to knit my beads on. So for this pattern, I'm knitting a bead on with every stitch. Obviously that could change based on what the pattern writer is going for. So I wanna take a bead and go ahead and slide them up. And when you're knitting rows that don't have beads, you just slide the beads all the way down. Okay, so you're gonna move that bead up close. And I'm using, um, these are my, this is my favorite colorway, my favorite size. Um, I'm using the Knitter's Pride Marbles needles and I, I they're all different colors based on size. I would totally buy an entire set that were this colorway though, because I love them. Okay, so you push your bead up to the needle and you just knit your stitch as you normally would. Now the first one in, at the beginning of the row is gonna be a little weird. It's gonna be on the side, but the next one, You're going to push that needle up, slide it up, or excuse me, that bead up, knit the stitch, and your bead is set. And you'll see if you flip the piece over that it's sitting exactly where it should be on the front of your piece. Go to the next one. Thank you, Chris, for noticing my needles match my yarn. I may or may not have coordinated it because I'm a nerd like that. I like to coordinate my yarn with my needles. Okay, and then you'll just continue that way all the way to the end. So pushing up a bead and then knitting it in. And that is, it's so easy. It's easy, easy peasy. And then you would just continue all the way around. So it does, it does take a little bit of work ahead of time, a little bit of planning. You can count out the beads, you could calculate it if you want. If you don't wanna do that, you can just you know rejoin and, and load them up in, in sessions, totally fine. All right, let's talk, I wanna just do a sidebar here about 
What if you run out of beads and or you're working with larger beads or you just frankly want to work on the wrong, right side, not the wrong side? Okay, so th these are ginorma beads. This is all I had at the time, so let's go with it. So I'm going to undo this because I cannot find the other bead. So these beads, another way that you can put on beads is with a crochet hook. Now, obviously because we're talking hooks here. The hole of the beads will need to be larger. If you have a tiny, tiny, dainty lace hook, that would be ideal. Uh, the smallest I have, these are the Knitter's Pride, this is the Waves. I, the smallest I had was a D, so that's why I'm using these big old be beads because it, it wouldn't work. But if you had a very tiny and if you've missed any part of this video, no worries, it's recording, you can rewatch it later. Okay, so let's say that I ran out of beads or I wanna work on the front of the piece and not the back of the piece. And again, ignore this, I would not actually use these beads on this yarn, but go with it. So you would just take your bead. Hi, Cornelia, nice to see you. Hi, Caddy. Okay, you're going to take your bead. Then you would just take the loop off the left hand needle, slide it through, place the stitch back on, and then you would just knit it properly. And that's all there is to it. So it, with this method, you would work on the front of the fabric. It wouldn't matter. You wouldn't need to preload the stitches, but you do have to really keep in mind that you'll need to go get a smaller hook than this, a teeny tiny hook, because you will not be using ginormous beads like that. I do, like I said before, however, recommend the method I showed first, which was pre-stringing the beads on it. Okay, so that is the long and the short of knitting with beads. Now I'm going to show you how to knit the peaks and wave pattern that is used in the Dewey scarf. Again, that scarf pattern from the Eamon Carter Museum exhibit that I worked on is available on my website, vickihowell.com, and I will also put a link in the show notes. Okay, so I've gone ahead and set up to work the last repeat. So what I'm going to show you now, the re how this works is that you're doing a series of elongated stitches at different lengths to create this sort of wave, this ebb and flow of stitches. And it's really easy, but it has a great effect and, is, and I love this for warmer weather projects. All right, so the first thing that you, knit, that you do is you yarn over, then you'll knit one. Then you'll yarn over twice, one, two, knit another one. Then you yarn over three times. And what you're doing is you're creating, you're giving more fabric, more yardage, which will then create more height. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so now we've gotten to the top, the highest point of our little kind of dewdrop shape. And now you're going to work in the opposite direction. So now yarn over twice. Yarn over once. And then the pattern just calls for knitting to end for this row. This pattern requires, I believe it is 10 stitches plus is six. So if you wanted to adapt it, it would make a really great wrist, wrist warmer or if you wanted to go big, a beach bag. Okay, then you're gonna flip over your work and on the wrong side, this is where the elongation magic happens. Okay, so we get to our yarn overs and all you wanna do is you wanna drop it. So there's one, knit the next stitch. Stitch. There's two, we're gonna drop both of those, knit the next stitch. Now there's three, back to two, and then the final one. And you can see 
how that created different heights of lace. Isn't that so cool and so easy? And that's really all you need to know to make this great dewy scarf. I'm gonna go ahead and flip around and see if there's any questions. Does that make sense to everybody? Beading, really easy. There's a ton of great projects um, out there that involve uh, beads, a lot of great little jewelry projects. I've seen wristbands, I've seen earrings, I've seen necklaces. Um, I, I've seen, uh, I think Laura Nelkin has a bunch of kits. So if you wanted, if you want to go that route, I fully encourage you to please tag me, Vicki Howell. Woo, almost lost the camera there. Um, with anything that you make, I love seeing what you create. And like I said, super easy, two methods, add a little razzle dazzle, um, to anything really, to a scarf, to a jewelry piece, to a bag, to a little girl's top. You can do just a little bit of detailing at a cuff. Really fun and simple, and it really makes your projects look next level. So that is all I have today. If you're interested in more lace, be sure to check out the lace episode of The Knit Show. You can find that on YouTube or by going to theknitshow.com. That has guests, uh, Kristen Omdahl, for you crocheters out there, and also Annie Modisette. Uh, both, both great smart, crazy, talented women, um, and they have loads to teach you. I also have a full blocking tutorial there, courtesy also of Knitter's Pride with their great blocking tools, so be sure to check that out. And thank you to all of you who subscribed to Yarnier. We sold out. Month of May boxes are gone. Um, we'll be opening up June soon, and I think you're really going to love the direction that goes. If you have subscribed and have not been accepted to the private Facebook group, please check your messages, the messenger, to see if you've gotten one. You may use a different name, and so I can't find you, and I've sent messages. And it'll be in the, you'll have to click on the tab that says it's like people you don't know or, you know, it's people you're not connected to. So there's that. But I'm really excited about that. We're going to get making our project soon and start a bunch of videos. Um, and it's a really great community. There's already a few hundred people in the community, which is very exciting. So that is all I have today. Thank you so much for starting your week out with me as always. I am going to go through and look through what you guys are making. Like I said, if you would post a link to any patterns, I would really appreciate it. I love it. I love the inspiration. I think everyone else does too. Until next time, please take a little time to be creative, be kind to yourself, take a deep breath and um, craft out. Okay, Mwah. bye.